all you do is basically tie it in and then wrap. Compared to many of the featured fly tires at the annual Salbug Roundup, Santau isn't the most experienced behind the vise. But even though he's only been tying for two years, he has quickly gained a reputation as an expert craftsman. A lot of it has to do with the background, where I started off as an artist when I was in uh, high school. But in the 90s, art didn't pay the bills, so my parents made sure that I chose a different major when I went to college. So I took up electrical engineering and then I worked at RCA. Between the art and working with the, uh, the engineering background, it makes fly tying a little bit easier because I could see a fly and I, I reverse engineer the fly right in my brain. It also helps I see 2010 tying on you know size 18 20 hooks not difficult because I don't need any magnifiers it doesn't hurt that he's an unabashed perfectionist if I tie on something and I'm and I didn't do it exactly the way it should be done I just undo it and I redo it until I get it right Tao's precision at the vice has earned him numerous industry sponsorships and nearly 14,000 Instagram followers but fly tying has done much more than that for Tao I can honestly say that it probably saved my marriage and my, my life because at the path that I was going down, it was going to lead to nothing but destruction. A master sergeant in the U.S. Army, Tao has been deployed six times to combat zones. He has received two Purple Hearts for combat injuries that resulted in 11 surgeries on his legs and back. Three years ago, while stationed in Hawaii, post-traumatic stress disorder caught up with him. Over the course of each deployment, you end up uh, having a lot of basically demons and so that builds up inside of you. Me having all these deployments under my belt, I had a lot of problems sleeping and a lot of anxiety issues. And the tying helped me refocus my brain into the aspect of wrapping thread and materials versus thinking about other uh, silly stuff. And ever since I started doing that, I've been able to sleep much better. I've been a much easier going person, friendlier person, and better husband, better father. Tao is no stranger to overcoming life's challenges. Born in Vietnam in 1974, Tao and his family fled the country amid the turmoil of the conflict's final days. My father was an officer in the South Vietnamese Army, so he was being hunted down with all the other South Vietnamese military personnel. And uh, we, were, we escaped to Malaysia, and we, we stayed on a refugee camp there, Palau Badong, which is a little island off the coast of Malaysia, for almost two years. And during that time there, my parents were trying to find political asylum in other countries that we had family at, and they all said no, but the U.S. said yes. And through the help of a Mennonite family, we ended up emigrating to the United States. First started off in California and then moved closer to that family that helped us out in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Lived the dream, went to high school, graduated from high school, went to college, graduated from college, got a cushy job, able to do whatever I wanted, being single and had no bills. But that all changed on September 11th, 2001. The World Trade said that tower number one is on fire. The whole outside of the building was just a huge explosion. Send every available ambulance, everything you got to the World Trade Center now. And my father you know, called me up and said, hey, you need to go join the Army. I was, <laughs> I was like, what? And he's like, you need to pay back our family's debt to the United States for allowing us to come here, and you're the oldest, so it's your obligation to pay back the family debt. So. You know, in my culture, your, fa your parents tell you to do something, you don't tell them no, argue against it. So I went to work and submitted my letter of resignation, and they all thought that I was on drugs or something. But I ended up leaving RCA and enlisted in the Army, and the recruiter asked me what you wanted to do. I was like, well, if I'm going to join the Army, take me where the fight's at. Based on his armed services aptitude test, Tao had his choice of Army jobs. He chose infantry. They tried to get me nuclear engineering and uh, linguists and all these other high-speed stuff. And I was like, no, put me where the fight's at. And I enlisted in the infantry. And so right off the bat, deployed right away off over into Afghanistan, Iraq. And then it was like back to back to back. And 17 years later, still in. Tao is at peace these days. When he isn't training young soldiers, he spends his days raising a family, fishing every chance he gets, and tying impeccable flies at a feverish pace. But reaching this point in his life hasn't been easy. About three years ago, I was stationed in Hawaii, and um, I've deployed six times because I'm active duty Army. And it being in infantry, we're always in the front line where all the battles are. And I've seen a lot of my own soldiers get killed or injured. 
and myself, I'm a Purple Heart recipient where I've been shot at and have bl been blown up. So I was going through a lot of my own healing myself with all like numerous surgeries. Being at the rank that I am, I don't have the luxury of basically breaking down and saying, woe is me. I had soldiers I had to take care of. So always basically putting all my own personal problems hidden inside of me and taking care of all my soldiers that have, were undergoing the, the same stressors and the PTSD and injuries and uh, mourning loss of their own friends and whatnot. So I had to take care of them all the time. And then as things were winding down and my time in Hawaii was coming to an end, I had about a month left and I was on assignment to come to Indiana. I had more time on my hand and that's when the realization of all my issues started kicking in. I was drinking real heavily. To make a long story short, I was at a bar. VFW in Hawaii and there was this Korean vet that had seen me come in there over and over again and I was basically drinking myself silly and he kept coming to talk to me and I just blew him off all the time and then he brought up the subject of fishing and that caught my interest because I fished a lot as a kid. He made me wait there at the bar, ran back home, brought the vice, clamped it to the, 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 uh, the bar itself and started showing me tie and I was intrigued. After transferring to a new duty station in Indianapolis, Tao attended an outdoor show and hooked up with the veteran support group, Project Healing Waters. He was introduced to a local fly shop that gave him a tying vise and materials, as well as a book that inadvertently speeded his development as a fly tire. And then I saw this fly in there, it's called the ginger quill, that I was in love with. It was just a beautiful fly with the natural materials, the peacock quill and the, the mallard duck wings and the whole nine yards. So, I, stuck, I wanted to tie that fly, went to, back to the fly shop and got all the materials that were on the list and didn't realize at that time that that was not a beginner fly by any stretch because the mallard quill wings is one of the most difficult things to do, but uh, I didn't know, so I felt that I need to learn how to tie this fly. And I ended up buying every single set of duck quills that they had by the time I finally got that, that fly right. And I ended up tying probably about 50 to 60 of them. Knowing what I know now that tying that first fly until I got it exactly right actually set me up for everything else afterwards because every other fly that I ended up tying afterwards was drastically easier. So it worked out in the long run, but it was not. Uh, I do not recommend any of those Catskill patterns as a first beginner fly. Just two years later, Tao is making a name for himself as one of the top fly tires in the country. It blew up into this huge social media beast that, I, that has completely taken me by surprise. Tao was initially reluctant to talk about his story, but his higher profile has given him a platform to talk about the healing power of fishing and fly tying. It has brought me a tremendous amount of uh, inner peace. And I know there are a lot of others out there that could use the same help. I can't stress just the importance of organizations like Healing Waters, Warriors and Quiet Waters and uh, fly fishing in general. It's just being out here and listening to the water and the birds and catching fish and you forget everything else. Tao spends his days molding young people into responsible adults and professional soldiers. And now he wants to use his free time to share his passion for fishing in the hope that it can help others. Help others, educate others, teach others is one of the, like I said before, one of the big things that I love to do. And now it's a different avenue of me teaching and helping somebody else that is struggling with either uh, military side with depression, with alcoholism, with PTSD, or somebody that has nothing to do with the military but they just want to get into tying and they don't know how or what to do. It basically has become my only hobby that I have and I love it. It's helping others and there's no other way that I would prefer to spend my free time besides my kids and my wife than just doing what I love to do.